Okay. <laughs> uh, oh, next one. Uh, what is OGN? Uh, Glidernet, this is the website where all of the information of OGN is in. Uh, it's here. This is the one. And uh, most of the information I'm going to present is in this uh, uh, website. Okay, so as you see in this uh, picture, your glider, from equipped your glider, uh, its uh, transmission is received by OGN receiver and OGN receiver transmit uh, your uh, location information to the OGN server. And uh, these site took the data from uh, server and shows the, for example, uh, this kind of uh, uh, picture. This is my uh, OGN receiver. Uh, So in addition to uh, from uh, OGN tracker, which is built on, uh, built on the Arduino or something, uh, uh, Rora transmitter uh, also OGN received the uh, information. Okay, next page. Okay, for example, uh, this is the uh, Horist. Oh. Uh, Horista, around the Horista, and uh, uh, Giruroi uh, OGN receiver detect uh, uh, glider and shows the track. Uh, okay, this is another site which shows the uh, glider and uh, all of traffic, which this one uh, transmit the ADSB out signal. So both uh, uh, airplane, helicopter, glider, uh, we can see the where they are. Of course, these days with no uh, glider traffic. Okay, in the United States and Canada, these sites, for example, uh, Horista, uh, Williams, uh, Nevada site, Moriarty, uh, Phoenix, uh, Arizona, and Houston site and the Toronto area in uh, Canada, these are uh, very active uh, on the original uh, receiver. Uh, here is a European site, a lot. <laughs> uh, the reason why, especially France, uh, France has a lot of uh, receiver because it seems like a uh, French government or Actually, the uh, equivalent uh, organization of FAA, FAA uh, give the uh, financial support. Uh, therefore, French uh, France has a lot of receivers. Also, Australia, New Zealand has uh, some receivers. Uh, for uh, OGN receiver. Uh, we have to have, uh, of course, antenna. Uh, in United States and Canada, 915 megahertz is uh, uh, frequency uh, from and uh, from use. So we need a, a 912 megahertz antenna. And uh, uh, Raspberry Pi, uh, this is a small, uh, like a uh, 10 centimeter by uh, five centimeter, uh, small arm-based uh, uh, single board computer. And uh, uh, this is the uh, RTL SDR. This is a receiver. Uh, these days, uh, uh, software uh, control the uh, uh, demodulate uh, signal, uh, radio signal, even the two gigahertz or 915 megahertz. Uh, these uh, last uh, 30, 40 years, uh, receiver uh, has a lot of evolutions. 
uh, not zero, uh, Raspberry Zero. This is small computer and uh, weak uh, uh, processor is not uh, powerful enough. So therefore uh, zero cannot be used. And recently, like uh, four or five months ago, uh, somebody in Switzerland start uh, uh, OGM receiver project uh, on the uh, hardware is called the Ridigo TTGO TB. The, this one is made in China and the price, uh, uh, both price is like uh, $35 or something. Uh, and the good point of this one is uh, uh, this one does not consume the uh, not much power. So for example, my uh, uh, glider site, uh, Willamette Valley Soaring Club, no spring glider port does not have uh, AC power. So when this project is uh, completed, uh, I am going to install the OGN receiver based on uh, T-beam on uh, 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 no spring glider port with uh, solar battery powered. And uh, uh, connection between antenna and uh, RPL SDR and the power supply, those devices required. Here's antenna. Uh, one of the club member uh, installed the uh, antenna, 915 megahertz band antenna. Uh, height, uh, length is uh, like a two meter, one, uh, six feet, seven feet, something like that. Uh, longer one is better, of course, uh, uh, because it has uh, some gain. Uh, so this is a version one uh, OGN receiver. Uh, this is a main part. Uh, Raspberry Pi single board, single board computer, uh, RTL, oh, RTL SDR, and uh, this one uh, connect to the antenna through this cable. And this one is powered uh, through the Ethernet cable. Uh, power supply provide uh, uh, 48 volt and uh, uh, combine the uh, Ethernet uh, signal and the power into single uh, Ethernet cable and the power uh, this one. Uh, and uh, uh, this side, this end uh, is going to uh, connect to your uh, Wi-Fi router or home router. So uh, uh, Raspberry Pi send a uh, location information through the uh, Ethernet cable. Or uh, you can send, uh, uh, you can connect the uh, uh, Raspberry Pi to your Wi Fi uh, network. Uh, but in that case, uh, you have to have a, a power supply, uh, a si uh, independent uh, uh, power supply to power the, uh, these uh, two devices. Any object, uh, not objection, uh, question? Okay, next. Uh, this is a version two. Uh, current hey, hey, version. Quick question. Go ahead. The antenna, you, the antenna you showed there looks very similar to my uh, two meter slash uh, 70 centimeter dual band antenna by Cobra. Is that, is that, that the same? No, it doesn't. Uh, the two meter and uh, uh, 70 centimeter, uh, 400, uh, 440 megahertz band uh, is a different frequency. Uh, those antenna does not work well uh, for the 915 megahertz. The gain is uh. less than zero and uh, so not good. For short distance, maybe okay. Uh, That's what I thought. Uh, next one. Oh, actually, the, uh, in a uh, 900 megahertz band uh, is a ham radio band. 
or ISM band in United States. So uh, ham radio uh, operator may have a 900 megahertz uh, antenna. Uh, actually, I bought uh, uh, antenna uh, at uh, ham radio outlet. Uh, this is a version two. Uh, okay, uh, underneath uh, uh, a Raspberry Pi uh, single board computer and uh, display upon. And I connect the two uh, RTL SDR receiver. And this is a small 900 megahertz, uh, 950 megahertz uh, uh, band antenna. And uh, later on, I will tell you, one of them uh, is for OGN receiver. Another one is for receiving the uh, weather station uh, inf uh, weather information. Uh, the next one. Uh, version three is, I said, uh, TTGO based on the TTGO uh, TBM. Uh, device. Uh, on back, uh, there is a uh, 200 mega amp hour battery. And uh, uh, oh, this micro USB port can uh, uh, charge the battery, uh, lithium polymer battery back, uh, and uh, uh, GPS and uh, LoRa 900 megahertz band uh, transmitter, uh, uh, trans uh, transceiver. And I, uh, antenna is attached to, go, uh, attached to this SMA uh, connector. Uh, oh. This device is also, uh, uh, at the end of the, my presentation, I, I'm going to tell you that I have another uh, subject, which is uh, soft RF. Uh, soft RF runs on this uh, device. Next page. Uh, interrupt me if you have a question. Uh, I, uh, uh, one of my club member installed the, uh, the antenna I showed you. And uh, uh, in a busy days, uh, uh, four or five uh, gliders uh, uh, was uh, flying. And uh, uh, this is a range, maximum uh, range, uh, origin receiver received uh, uh, their from signal. Here is the uh, scale. It said uh, two kilometer. I can't see. I need a reading glass. Uh, 10 kilometer, 10 kilometer. This distance uh, uh, length is a 10 kilometer. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, uh, maybe the 50 kilometer radius is a receiving uh, uh, range. Of course, uh, uh, glider is very high above, like uh, 5,000 feet, uh, 6,000 feet. Therefore, uh, receiver uh, received uh, uh, this length, this distance. Okay. Oh, this, uh, uh, when? Uh, hey, Kaz. Yep. On that last slide, it looks like there's a circular area just to the southeast that's completely void of any signals. Is there some reason for that? Uh, yeah, probably there is a, some, uh, I know, ah, two reasons. One is a uh, uh, glider, uh, I think here is the KHIO, uh, Hillsborough Airport. That's one reason. And the second one, somewhere over here, there is uh, uh, some hill or mountains. So, uh, the, and the, this area is a populated area. So the glider pilot uh, avoid. So two reasons, glider pilot avoid or mountain. Okay, uh, yeah, I got it. Yeah, they're just avoiding that airspace. So the gliders were outside of the Hillsborough class Delta. Mainly we fly 
this area. This area. Uh, I, we don't want to go to this way or this way. Here, uh, this is a, a Portland uh, airport and uh, uh, F-15 Eagle uh, return to PDX through this way. Okay, next. Uh, so we, uh, 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 I watched the uh, website, OGN receiver uh, tracking site, and one day uh, one of the glider ran out, and uh, I know exact location they ran out. That's uh, one of uh, the benefit. And uh, another one is uh, actually uh, this one. Uh, so August 13th, these glider. Uh, flying uh, from uh, uh, North Spain glider port and uh, their takeoff time and the landing time is recorded. So this may be a, a alternative of your flight logbook. Uh, that's it for OGN. Now you're only gonna know the exact location of its landing if they're within line of sight of one of your antennas, right? Correct. Uh, oh, one another I, uh, topics I want to tell you, which is uh, uh, compare with another device such as uh, uh, spot or uh, in reach. Those two devices are uh, satellite based. So anywhere, even Antarctica, uh, your glider location is reported. And also uh, in which you can send a message uh, to someone. Uh, that's a good point. On, with OGN receiver, there is no those kind of uh, 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 capabilities. On the other hand, OGN is uh, uh, kind of, uh, how can I say, uh, uh, spot and in which you have to buy a device, you have to pay the annual uh, fee. Uh, on the other hand, OGN, no fee associated. Just you need the uh, uh, firm and uh, maybe uh, some of you uh, have a, a receiver and uh, installed uh, antenna and uh, internet uh, subscription uh, fee, you, uh, the person who installed the receiver. One thing I would like to say for um, Kaz's presentation is that um, the open glider network may actually, um, it may solve a gap between those pilots who uh, do not have a spot or in reach and the trace that may exist prior to them actually activating their in reach device. So you don't really know a glider pilot has trouble until they have actually landed out, perhaps, and then activating their spot or their in reach device. And this open glider network may actually leave us a trace to go in the proper direction, even if they do not activate such device. Thank you. Uh, for that, uh, the person who may uh, have uh, in reach, you know, uh, spot that they may uh, have, uh, they may have a soft RF. This is the, uh, as I said, from minus collision detection, minus logging. And uh, I saw the one of soft RF at $80. So the price is much, much less than from. Uh, so, and uh, actually the, I uh, put the, uh, my from device in the uh, North Spring Rider Port and uh, uh, asked a uh, uh, grab member to, to freely uh, take the uh, soft RF and put it on, the, uh, on their glider. So this is a uh, less expensive alternative uh, for FRAM plus uh, 
uh, spot and engage. Uh, for the another topics, these one uh, have another uh, have a topics I can present again. Uh, let me know if you interesting. That's all. Okay, so I got a. This is James. I got a couple of questions. So what you're showing here is kind of looks like for the the electronics hobbyist, but you know, with the extensive network that you showed in France, I'm assuming that there's a commercial off the shelf product that you can just buy and install in your aircraft without having to do all the hobby electronics. Is that right? Uh, yes. Uh, it's, uh, mm, it's all uh, branchial based. So you're correct. Because the, the various options that you were showing, were they your p personal configurations or is that kind of just the communities developing those together wasn't quite clear to me. Uh, okay, let me, oh, this one. For example, yeah. this is, uh, this can be a soft RF. So this is a, a how can I say, totally uh, independent device. For example, right. this one has a battery. So charge the battery and uh, put uh, all these devices, put in the uh, glider and turn on. So this one can be, uh, uh, can act as a, uh, sim similar to the flam. Yeah. So is the latency and the reliability, or that would be, I mean, if you're looking for real time, uh, you know, information being sent out so other people can see where you are um, real time, uh, obviously you want, you know, good latency and reliable signals. Uh, so what, what is, where would that stand? Uh, how would you characterize those two kind of parameters? It's, uh, the, for example, if you prefer the uh, reliable device, uh, you, uh, you have to have a FRAM and uh, uh, spot and uh, uh, or in the uh, This is your preference. The, the output, uh, output uh, power of this device and the flam are same because of the regression. So, uh, and the, regarding the reliability, uh, maybe flam is better. Uh, so it's your preference. Okay, thanks. So James, I think for real-time tracking, we probably have to look to the Aussies and what they're doing with the F1 comps. Right. Well, I mean, what's, well, I guess what I'm getting at in a roundabout way is what's the primary benefit? Is it real-time uh, visibility of, of gliders flying to the rest of the flying community or is it more about, you know, land out visibility and so forth or both? I would say the the, uh, the OGN part of it, I think, and Kaz, correct me if I'm wrong, but the OGN part is the part where you have a receiver that's receiving everybody's flarm traffic and transponder traffic, and you can see in near real time where gliders are flying and where people have been, I believe. Um, and some of these other devices are more for in-cockpit uh, collision awareness. Is that a correct summary, Kaz? Uh, in terms of uh, uh, real time or not, uh, OGN receiver and uh, uh, spot and indeed are same. Uh, for I believe spot uh, transmit uh, signal every five minutes or something, right? Uh, it's depend on the flam and uh, uh, time lag between uh, OGN receiver received the signal and uh, uh, sent to the server, that's uh, very quick. It depends on the internet speed. So both are same in terms of uh, uh, real time. James, what I think um, kind of bridging the gap between um, power farm spot and reach is that, um, excuse me, there's some kind of amber alert going on. Um, the, the gap between those two is that um, 
I think it's not a matter of uh, coverage, signal strength, and power. It's more of a matter of subscription and the fact that Kaz is talking about how this uh, simple program and the simple uh, uh, transmitter and the glider at very low cost with no further subscription is enough to keep uh, surveillance going on the open glider network. So I, I think that's kind of the benefit is that uh, for very low cost and just sticking something in your glider with an antenna, then you have dramatically increased uh, the soaring operation situational awareness on where you might be, even if you do not have an in-reach device or you do not have powerful arm on board. Yeah, fair enough. For example, if you receive, uh, install the origin receiver on each site, such as uh, Ephrata, uh, uh, Wilson Creek, Mansfield, uh, many, a uh, lot of uh, congested, rather congested area is, is going to be covered, right? That's, that's part of the issue is that not only is the receiver exist, but you also have the infrastructure to support that receiver. You have to have a either a wireless or some connection to a web-based uh, portal so you could get this out into the world. And you have to power the, the device. Uh, so you have to have access to those two bits of information, uh, bits of uh, hardware to support an OGN site, a remote OGN site someplace. Uh, it's something the board has been looking at. Uh, we were looking at uh, Wilson Creek, for example, because they have a, uh, the state has a webcam there and we basically try to piggyback on that. But, uh, other locations that would be good would be like Mansfield or up on top of Beasley Hills or uh, north up by Twisp, up in the mountains up by Twisp. But again, that needs coordination with some infrastructure supplier or somebody that we would, uh, whether it's a ham radio operation that's that's got a, a, a uh, repeater up in the mountains or uh, some webcam because that infrastructure is there, but, but you still need to coordinate that. You just don't plop one of these out in the desert and say, okay, here it is. Uh, you gotta have the communication and power infrastructure in place. I'm done. Okay, so no further uh, question. I'll stop sharing there. Thank you.